begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we praise him in a manner that he alone deserves to be praised. And we seek his assistance and his guidance and his forgiveness and we turn to him in repentance and we place in him alone our trust and our conviction. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah without any associates or partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad والسلام, was indeed his servant and his prophet and the final messenger sent to all of mankind. And I precaution the believers and myself to the taqwa of Allah that we be mindful and we be heedful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for myself and for you that he save us and our families and our communities and the believers all around the world from the calamities of the life of this world as well as the great calamity, the chastisement of the hellfire. Allahumma ameen. The first home of Adam alayhi salam, it was in Jannah. And he was allowed to enjoy the amenities of the gardens of paradise alongside his wife until one day something happened that would change the entire course of his life. Likewise, the shaitan, he was honored to be in the company of the noble angels, those who are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until one day something happened and he was removed from that company. And Yunus alayhi salam, he was the distinguished prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest of rank amongst the mankind, calling the people to at tawheed to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any associates or partners until all of a sudden one day something changed. And you have Musa alayhi salam who was the guest in the house of Fir'aun until one day he did something or something happened and all of that changed. And all of these events that I mentioned, they echo a very similar message, a very similar reality, and that is that one choice, one choice is enough to change the entire course of our lives for better or for worse. One choice, and Yunus alayhi salam is in the belly of the well. One choice in Adam alayhi salam who was enjoying the fruits of paradise was expelled therefrom. One choice in Iblis who was in the company of the Malaika was removed therefrom. One choice in Musa alayhi salam who was the guest of Pharaoh was a wanted man on the run for his life. How valuable is a single choice? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ الْعَبَدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ رِدْوَانِ اللَّهِ He said that a servant would speak with a statement from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا He doesn't even give it any significance. He doesn't think twice about this statement. يُلْقِي بِهَا فِي أَفْوَانِ يَرْفَعُ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَاتِ and because of this choice of words, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would raise him in rank and status. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued, وَإِنَّ الْعَبَدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ That in a servant, he would speak with a statement from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا And he doesn't think it significant. He doesn't give it any weight. Yeah, we be fi jahannam. And because of that choice of words, he would be cast and immersed into the hellfire. Some choices that we make in our lives, they can never be taken back. Some choices that we make in our lives, they have irreversible consequences in this life and perhaps even in the next. Things that will follow us for the next five years, for the next 20 years, for the next 30 or 40 years. For example, when the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they gathered to plot against him and they decided that we're going to cast him into the pit and we're going to leave him into the wilderness. That decision, the ripple effects of that decision, they went on for decades to come. And we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about Bani Israel in the Qur'an when they failed 
to follow the instruction of Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala fa innaha muharramatun alayhim. That he forbade their entry into the, the holy land. Arba'een sana. For 40 years. Yatihuna fil ard. And they were left to wander about aimlessly without direction or destination for 40 years. And, and this is, of course, in the literal sense in this verse, but this is also something that can manifest in other ways, in different capacities, that we make a decision in our life. And because of that decision, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes us to stand still, making no progress, making no development for decades on end. And I want to make a special emphasis on this particular point for our youth. Because you know when we're young, sometimes we believe that we are invincible. Sometimes we believe that we're untouchable as the expression goes, la nata'allamu hatta nata'allamu. That we don't learn until we get hurt. That certain things throughout the course of your life, you can almost guarantee it if you live long enough, you will be presented with difficult choices. You will be presented with the temptations of the life of this world to the point that perhaps you would find yourself pulling on the leg of your parents, begging to go to this place of tempta temptation with this person or that person. I remember a gentleman from my time in high school, he was an exceptional football player, the Gatorade State Player of the Year in all of New Jersey. And he was getting scholarship offers left and right from top universities across the nation until one day, one day he made a choice that I'm going to hang out with my friends. And I'm not going to tell you what happened or what he did, but at the end of the story, he was standing before a judge, and he was fending for his freedom while the friends that invited him on that journey, they left with a clean slate. And alhamdulillah, this individual, by the permission of Allah, not only did he later on embrace Islam, but he actually survived that calamity in his life. But even still, the damage, it had already been done. After being delayed some time from going on to play college football, he still had to carry that stigma and that reputation. And so that is the reality that one choice and you're standing before a judge. One choice and children are being born out of wedlock. One choice and you're struggling with addiction. Or even worse than that, one choice and people are gathering to pray over your body. This is the reality of life. Or on a brighter note, and what we hope for ourselves and our brothers and our sisters and our friends in Islam and the believers around the world is that one choice. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, and you're memorizing the Quran. One choice and you're leaving behind that haram relationship or that haram enterprise. One choice and you're taking that vacation money and instead of going to Vegas, you're going to make that journey to Mecca and Medina instead. One choice, brothers and sisters, youth and elders, could be the difference between eternal chastisement and eternal salvation in the garden of paradise. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawlan hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin min kulli dhanb. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-tawwab al-rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Our choices in life, they do not only impact us as individuals, 
But a choice that you make, it can impact the life of those who are under your charge. It can impact the life of your children or vice versa. It can impact the life of your family and your community and even your nation at large. One choice could impact not just the people who live in our time, but it could impact people that would come generations later, hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years. An easy example is Adam alayhi salam, that his choice did not only impact him and his wife, but it impacted the entire human race until eternity. And we also have the example of the believers in the battle of Uhud, when they were on the brink of victory until they abandoned the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ in the nick of time. In a very short window of time, they made a lapse in judgment and they took of choice. And that choice led to the demise of many of the companions of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with them all. And not only that, but the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he was injured in that battle and he fell to the point that the people begin to shout out that the Messenger of Allah had been slain. This is the value of a single choice. And on a higher note, one of the blessed choices of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the night of Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj, when he encountered the angel Jibril alayhi salam, and he presented to the Messenger of Allah a choice. It was a choice between that which was pure and that which was impure, a glass of wine and a glass of milk, and the blessed Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he chose that which was pure. And Jibril alayhi salam, the noblest of Allah's angels and the mightiest of Allah's angels, one who is free from sin and perfectly obedient, he rejoiced at the choice of the Messenger of Allah. He rejoiced at the choice, saying, Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadaka lil fitra, praising Allah that He guided the Messenger to the fitra, the pure inclination towards good. And then listen to what he said. He said, Lo al khamra ghawat ummatuk. That if you would have chosen, if your choice was going to be the khamr, the wine, the intoxicant, then your entire nation eventually would have gone astray. The distinction of the human being is free will. Free choice. This is what distinguishes us from the angels. And with that free choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us a special type of intelligence. Because free choice without intelligence is a recipe for disaster. And it is based on our choice that we will attain salvation. And it is based on our choice that we'll attain the eternal chastisement. As I close with the statement of Allah's Messenger who said, Kullu ummati yadkhulun al jannah. He said, All of my nation, they will enter into paradise, illa man aba, except for the one who refuses, except for the one who chooses not to. Qalu ya Rasulullah. They said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, wa man yaba, who would ever refuse? Who would ever choose not to go into Jannah? And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, قَالَ مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever obeys me, then he will go into Jannah. وَمَنْ أَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى And whoever disobeys me, then he has refused. He has chosen not to go into Jannah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us of those who choose wisely. For ourselves, for our families, for our communities, and for the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam at large. And may our choices always be a means of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may they never be a means of distance.